From Nip Tuck to Drag Race, Girl Groups, a book, and a starring role in A Star Is Born, I'm sitting here with the phenomenally talented Willem. Thank you. you. You forgot Humble. Humble? I'm oh, getting yeah. that Humble in there? But I don't know if you could say a starring role in A Star Is Born, a featured role maybe. I mean... I'm number 17 on the cast list. I mean, you should have been like up a little bit more because I, I mean, you got the most laughs. You you were the comedic relief of a sad movie, so I believe that that should, that, I, that's a starring role. I did okay. After uh, the first time I saw it, um, I was like, I got some chuckles. And Gaga was like, chuckles? <laughs> Chuckles, oh no, honey. And like, she she just like gave me props for a second. So that was really, really nice. Must feel good. Um, I know that a lot of times, especially you're known as being outspoken, you're known as speaking your mind. Mm -hmm. Has that always been a thing with you? Like, have you always been the type of person who always speaks their mind and is always truthful? Um, usually it's my truth. Is it always the truth? I don't know. Uh, it depends on who you are. But uh, I've always, my report cards used to say I have an attitude problem. For sure. I'm trying to uh, do the whole, like, you have two ears, one mouth, so you should use your ears more than your mouth mm -hmm. thing. But you can't fuck an ear hole. <laughs> so. That's true. Yeah. So when did you end up getting started in the drag? Like, what led you to want to put on a wig, put on the makeup? What was it? I used to draw dresses and, like, buildings when I was young. Uh, so I didn't know architecture or designer. But I would draw dresses and people would be like, oh, you're going to be a fashion designer? I said, no, 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 these are for me. No, how dare you? Um, and then after that, I started doing, like, costume design and theater. And then when I was 13, there was, like, some closing night party. And they put me up in drag for something. And I remember I wore red corduroys and, like, this little nighty and like bad wig black hair terrible and then after that i started going to rocky horror my dad would take me there and rocky horror was the first time i like passed because i was like a chubby little teenager and everyone was like oh she her i was like ah oh, they think i'm a woman um so i love that and then when i was 16 i first got paid for drag for the first time so so years 2011 drag race is coming around oh yeah how did that end up happening well they asked me to audition for season one, they asked me to make a tape and I said, no, I'll just come in and meet with you. They're like, no, we need a tape. And I'm like, I'm not making a tape. I'm an actor. I don't, this reality show, blah, blah, blah. Cut to season three. Between season three and season four, I, I did a movie called something. <laughs> it, was, it was like James Gandolfini, Diane Lane, Cinema Verite, because Cinema Verite is like the truth or what, I don't fucking know. Um, anyway, so, uh, I was in that with this casting director who had great scenes in drag with like Gandolfini and Diane Lane and Thomas Decker. It was a great part. Detox was in it too. I got her a little side gig in it. Um, same casting director three months later was casting a Don Johnson pilot set in a hair salon. It was very like Warren Beatty shampoo and there were three little like fag assistants. Like one was white, one was Latin, one was black. Um, and the casting director wouldn't see me for it. And my agent told me, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna barge in there, she knows me, like, um, but can you get some answer why? And she said, yeah, you're not on the network list. And I said, what does that mean? She means you're not on the list of approved names that she can bother seeing because the network wants to see names and you're not a name. And I was like, oh, wow. She knows I'm a good actor. She just mm -hmm. cast me in something three months ago. But um, adding insult to injury, not only would they not see me, but um, Chris Crocker got the part of the white fag. And I was like, I've been working in this town for 10 years and you're gonna give it to someone who's screaming on the internet? God bless them, I'm friends with them now and stuff. But like I was, I felt some kind of way. Yeah. And it was really hard for me to find a place to put those feelings when I was like, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing everything right and I'm not a name. Shangela got the uh, one of the other parts and she was a name mm -hmm. and then like a week or two later um a casting producer and director named Ch chanel perillo uh called my manager and requested a tape for drag race and we talked about it and we're like it might be a good idea if you want to keep acting to get your name out there a little more and then i went on drag race and it's kind of like i had to go in what i looked at as a downward uh trajectory to a reality show mm -hmm. to get to back up yeah. Does that make sense? No, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you had to have some type of name for people to be able to see you, and that's yeah. what you were viewing at that time. Do you Did you like your experience on Drag Race? I had, I had a lot of fun on Drag Race because there were no stakes for me. I wasn't trying to win, and I was just trying to go and fuck shit up and make a name for myself and get screen time. And Correct. I did that. I checked off that box. 
So it, you get disqualified. It becomes the talking round of everywhere. Like I literally think you being disqualified gave you a bigger name for yourself than if you would have won the season. Yeah. Um, and then you're on the reunion and there's the conjugal visit type thing of what did Willem do? Mm -hmm. That conjugal thing was made up. So what was, what did Willem do? What did Willem do? Here's the thing, they knew everything that I did because as I was breaking the rules, I was telling them, trying to get kicked off. We gave them money to get us stuff at, a st at stores. They didn't, they weren't feeding us right. They were giving us like literally six, seven, $75 for 12 people to eat that makes like 675 per person or something at like 10 30 at night they didn't know our names they called latrice la something this white devil bitch so i was like bitch they're racist and once i told latrice and got chad going we stood up for ourselves and we were like you need to know our names and then i was like heather what's her name and she's like i don't i don't know and I, oh, oh and i started barking at her for no reason and i didn't know why but i scared her and she backed out of the room and i felt so proud i was like you will not make money off us drag queens being gay men yourselves and fag hags and not know our fucking names. You won't, especially since or hanging around your neck, you have one side that has our boy pictures in her name and one side that has our girl pictures in her name. You do not call Latrice La something. Yeah. So I had it with them at that point, but um, so I broke those rules with going to the store and getting stuff, but I brought other girls so they couldn't kick us all off. Um, I stole, I, um, what else did I do? I got everybody high and drunk all the time. Um, I tried to take feather fans, I tried to take RuPaul's Iron Fist shoes that were there. Um, and then after that, I broke the biggest reality rule there is on the last day of production. They were So between when I was kicked off and the last day of production, I went to New York and did a show for a week and a half mm -hmm. in the Fringe Festival. I thought it was going to transfer to Broadway. That's why I was like, I'm going to leave Drag Race to, you know, go do this show, get on Broadway, blah, blah, blah. It didn't transfer. It won the audience award. It was Jersey Shore's a goal. Two of the girls from Glow are on it. Danny Friends, Daisy Rhoda, Hannah Lowe Patton. Um, it's a great show. Um, but when I got back, I was like, all right, well, show's wrapping. Everybody's going out tonight to Mickey's because I knew a couple of the people. Um, so I went out and they had like bleachers set up at Mickey's. They knew there would be so many people. And me and this one producer were sitting there and um, he was the producer of Untucked. Mm -hmm. And there was another producer of Untucked too named um, Jen, who I really enjoyed, who they were doing something during the second episode of Untucked, which I didn't approve of. It was like emotional manipulation of Jiggly on the day her mom died, the first anniversary. I wasn't there for it. I spoke up and they said, well, if you don't like it, you can leave. So I left. And then they only had that half hour to make Untucked where they were deliberating and doing, you know, the judging mm -hmm. and figuring out who they were going to put in the bottom and stuff. So after I left and went outside, they, well, Jen, the producer, comes running back. She's like, we need you back in. We need you. Like, we, you, we're sorry. We're sorry. And I was like, I don't need you to be sorry. I need Stephen Korff to be sorry. Who was the one that told me I could get out? Um, so I made him step out of production and apologize to me. And then I went back in the room. I said, you don't get to treat me like that at all. And the last night at that club where we, um, where there was a little rap party, he was the one I was making out with. So we go in the bathroom, he fucks me, which was amazing, huge stick, um, <laughs> really fun. We get pulled out of the bathroom because they obviously see two feet. And then um, he, as we're being pulled out of the club too by the security, he picks up a cup and he throws it at who? Raven on stage at Mickey's. She says those two out as we are already being kicked out. So we're outside of Mickey's and at that point more people from Drag Race, more staff members, Chris McKim, the showrunner of the actual show, who's Steven's best friend too. He's um he they're all trying to like, you know, get us away from each other because we're outside and we're making out and still fucking around. About a week later, a week or couple weeks, um, the producer I fucked ended up calling me and he's like, let's go to lunch, blah, blah, blah. Like, sure, let's, whatever. He said that like, he was trying to like get me back in with WOW and all that. And like, I just, I don't really like the way, my only regret from it is I should have made him more a rubber. <laughs> <laughs> so you were being a little bad bitch. You were doing bad things on Drag Race. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think the real reason? Oh, why the conjugal. Oh, oh, yeah. So the conjugal reason after, that's what they came up with to like make sure everybody, you know, looks good. I wasn't trying to make them look bad. So I was like, I'll go with the story X, Y, Z. I knew that All Stars was coming. I wanted to play along to get on that. Um, 
and the conjugal was just easy because once I did tell them, oh, look, I, I had a computer and, um, you know, because I was running my little go-go boy business while yeah. I was still there. Um, cause everybody, everybody got to have a side hustle. I wasn't yeah. going to give that up to, you know, go play Fruit Loop on a TV show. <laughs> um, so the conjugal was the story that we all decided, decided to, go to go with. It. Yeah. And it was easy and it was true. Yeah. So after Drag Race, you end up releasing a song called Rupologize. Mm -hmm. And in Rupologize, you say, Then when All Star comes around, you say, Tell me I don't need Were you actually called for All-Stars? Yes. I was booked for All-Stars. And um, I was trying on a gown at Siren on Sunset. Or it was either Siren or, Re or um, Paper Bag Princess. One of, the, one of the two places. I went to both stores. It was the second one. I don't remember which was first. But I was in the dressing room. It was latex. It was Siren. I was zipping it up and powder all over because you have to put powder on to get latex on. And Susan Haber, my manager, calls me and she says, um, they're canceling you for All Stars. And this was Friday. I was supposed to report on Sunday for All Stars. In June, I had canceled all these Pride gigs the season I was on. So there were plenty of gigs. I canceled thousands of dollars worth of work, probably like at least 25, you know, to clear three, four weeks. It was a lot of money. And I was like, oh, wow. So for the next three weeks, I sit with my thumb in my ass and do nothing. I was like, this is like a loss of income. I signed my contract. I signed everything. They canceled me because the quote was, we don't see you having stakes or stories with any of the girls. And you know why? I think, um, because a month before I had just done drag you mm -hmm. and I had done drag you because one girl didn't pass her background check because they had found stuff by then. That girl that didn't pass her background check was also the one I probably would have had the most stakes with from what everybody said, Fifi. So once it was found out she couldn't do drag you, all Stars was after Drag You, so she definitely couldn't do that one. So they canceled me, hmm. and they brought on Mimi. The feud with Rue, did that come from the All Stars and the disqualification drama? No, she doesn't give a fuck about me, and I honestly don't give a fuck about her. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't care. She doesn't know some of our names. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's videos of DragCon of her not knowing people's names. So the, literally at at the reunion for. Season seven or eight, whichever one Layla was on, she calls her Lila three times. And then it's earpiece, earpiece, earpiece. Okay, we're gonna go back. And then she says Layla's introduction correctly. And she doesn't look at Layla, who's like feet away from her and saying, Girl, sorry, you know, I met you once and you were on two episodes and you got kicked off, make a joke of it. She doesn't even say that. It's like, are you you're a drag queen, and that's another queen that you mm -hmm. just fucking insulted in front of a room full of people by not even knowing her name. And you can't be like, girl, sorry. Yeah. You know? Or make, yeah. You know what? Gratitude is not conditional, so I have nothing bad to say about the, the person. But um, there's so many better things to, uh, to wonder about than what makes her tick. Yeah. I think. You know? That's true. And I mean, you've made a name with, of yourself without her. And that's... No. I... I I, w I would not be in the position I am literally across the street from the production company that makes Drag Race without RuPaul's Drag Race. So I haven't made a name without her. I went on her show to become a name. And it and kind of happened. And you've taken that, but then you've become your own self after that. Sure. Well, I was always me, but she, her show helped me become the name. More, yeah. I guess. So the girls are still saying my name wrong when they introduced me to be shady at shows. They're saying, William, give it up. I'm like, really? You don't know my name? <laughs> <laughs> they try it. Try you they know the try they know they it know. They, they know. they know. There's no way they don't know. It happened in South America once two years ago and, um, and that was a language thing, I think, but whatever. What do you think the biggest misconception of Willem is? <sighs> um, that I have like hundreds of wigs. <laughs> I don't. I only have like 78. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I try to stay off of Reddit now because it wasn't doing good stuff for my self-esteem. So I don't really know what the biggest um, I don't, people are afraid. A lot of times I get feedback like, I thought you were going to be a bitch or wow, you're so much bigger in person. So just like the normal, like bigger, fatter. 
fatter really? and taller. People think I'm really tiny because on Drag Race I was like 140 pounds and like the skinny like blonde twink, and now I'm like a normal sized person. I'm like 160, 155. <laughs> Ever like to see somebody in public and be like, oh, you look a lot bigger. Oh, the meet and greets all the time. Uh, the things that people say out of the mouths of babes, literally like, oh my god, I thought you were gonna be so much smaller and tiny. No, bitch, I'm a man in a wig, and you just paid twenty dollars to meet me and take a picture. <laughs> Concentrate. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, I love meet and greets, but sometimes it's just like me and Alaska will turn to each other and be like. Did they just say that? They think that that was okay to say to me. Like, why? It's great. I don't. I love it. You know, the one person out of the room of ninety nine. So, okay, Gaga quote. God bless. God uh, is Gaga. So, speaking of Alaska, before Alaska and before Courtney, you were in another group, DWV. Mm -hmm. And before that, that was out of Trans K, and Trans K was out of Club Makeup, which like you know iterations of iterations of yeah. bands. So DWV is with Vicky Box mm -hmm. and Detox. Yeah. And I remember I was working in a gay bar in Atlanta. Which one? And I was Joe's and Juniper. Do you know where that is? No, I know Blake's. I know it's literally around 10. the corner from Blake's. Got yeah. it. So I was working there, and I remember they put on all the screens when Boys of Bottom came out, and yeah. it was on all the screens. And I was like, "What is this provocative song?" And I, I was wrote like, it, getting it. And I was like, "Yeah." So you're like, "Someone wrote a song about I was like, me." But I, I feel in my head, this Your is verse. me in my head. Uh, yeah, correct. Um, but <laughs> I feel in my head that that song in gay culture became more popular than the actual song, Girl on Fire. Like, I, I, I can't hear that song and not hear this Boys of Bottom. Like, I, I don't hear Alicia Keys anymore. I, you ended Alicia Keys' career. Like, it's gone. No. It's yes, it is. It uh, is. I'm just glad I didn't get sued. That song has 12 writers, and they could have taken me down very easily, but it yeah. seems like somebody had a soft spot because I, yeah. Usually when I parody stuff, the artist finds out about it somehow because everybody knows artists are surrounded by gays, mm -hmm. stylists, hair, makeup. So they know. Um, and I've gotten good feedback from a lot of my parodies. One, I didn't. And then Boys of Bottom, I didn't hear anything. But like, um, I, I talked to someone who worked with Alicia once and they're like, girl. I was like, <laughs> work. She didn't mind it. So I was happy. That's good. And you did like Boys of Bottom, you did Silicone. There was like different, more songs that ended up coming from that, um, from your group. Chow Down. Chow Down and Chick-fil-A. Oh my that God. That was like a political rallying cry because we were just really like, was. all this bullshit. And um, I hadn't had Chick-fil-A before and Detox and Vicky introduced me to it. And I was like, ooh, this chicken's so good. So, so what's the flavor with? I said, hate. <laughs> <laughs> but did you expect those songs to like take off the way that they did, especially in gay culture? Um, Chow Down, the video looked sickening. Yes. Michael Serrato did it. I thought that that video might help propel the song. I also was the first person to use my, um, my time on the show. I timed it, the exit, to have a big internet PR rush. That's good. And so I did that, and then um, when Detox was on the show, Boys of Bottom, same thing, same time kind of thing. I think that Boys of Bottom, I didn't know what it would become, but it, my husband, as soon as I sang it to him, because it was about a bad three-way, that happened three different times with my husband and I <laughs> and one of his basketball teammates, where the first time, didn't get fucked, second time, didn't get fucked, third time, I was like, I don't know about this, and the guy's like, no, I'm gonna get up in that ass, blah, 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 I was like, oh, okay, cool, and then te cut to 10 minutes later, my phone rings, I answer it, go downstairs, come back up, this kid's getting nailed to the headboard, and I was like, I am not getting topped tonight by anybody, <laughs> so I do the international sign for get the fuck out of my house, which is start vacuuming, put my iPod in, Alicia Keys, come on, start singing, I was like, this, this boy's bottom, um, and I sang it to my husband after, and um, he's like, that's a hit, and I was like, no, it's not, it's stupid, I repeat the same thing constantly, bottom, 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 he's like, it's a hit, I was like, all right, so I had to, it took over two weeks to get Dee and Vicky into the studio. Vicky was fine, Detox was busy, it was her season. Vicky literally put her in an Uber, and then when we got to our, when they got to the studio, I knew that they were pulling up, because Detox, Vicky got out of the car, and then I was like, where's Dee? She was sleeping in the back seat. She opens up the side door, takes her legs, pulls them, pulls her onto the ground, 
and into the studio. <laughs> Detox then proceeds to sleep on Markaholic's couch. Markaholic was our producer and my producer for a lot of stuff. He uh, also produces for Rue now. Did uh, Hey Kitty Girl, wrote that. Um, Rue like looks and sees what everybody's doing. So, huh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh, who does your hair? Okay, come here, Delta. Um, <laughs> so like stuff like that. Uh, she, Detox went to sleep on Mark's couch and then she went in, did her rap, one take, and then said, wait, I can do it better. And then did the second take. The first take is what we used though. Like she literally did one take, then she went back to bed. And then Vicky and I did the harmonies and then she did like one middle harmony. <laughs> but like, it was one of those things where I, I was like, come on, let's get this out, let's get this out. And we did and I'm glad because after that, we were the first drag act in a lot of countries from RuPaul's Drag Race. Like I could, I've been to I think, almost 40 countries and 20 of them, we were at least the first queens in because of this That's song. Awesome. Literally, people were doing Facebook polls like, hey, get this to 10,000 likes and we'll bring these girls here. We were in Belgium the next week, and then Dubai, and then like just like all over the world. It was so fun. What led to the downfall of the Joker? Um, we, honestly, 